Santa Clarita is a fascinating case of what happens when a city so fervently bought and sold on the idea of suburban sprawl, wider than wide roads, and 20 lane highways clashes with a population that so desperately clings to what little urbanism the city offers them. It's a perilous tale of one coin with two very, very different sides, making Santa Clarita one of the most conflicted cities in California, and maybe even the nation. Santa Clarita is a large city. It's the 17th largest in California, with 228,000 people as of the 2020 census, ahead of cities such as Modesto and San Bernardino, and being incorporated more than 100 years after the latter. Before the 1950s, the area definitely fit the old Wild West aesthetic of many small California towns. Population statistics don't even exist before the 1950 census, when there were as few as 2,800 people living there. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, the area was mostly known for its ranches, railroads, and oil refineries, all commonalities shared with much of Los Angeles County during that time period. In the 1960s, 60s, 70s, and until the present day, the city has boomed, rapidly growing into the third largest city in LA County, with a diverse socioeconomic and demographic portfolio, touting its safety and job opportunities, being strategically located close enough, but also quite far from the hustle and bustle of the nation's second largest city and its neighborhoods. Santa Clarita is constantly ranked as one of the safest cities in the nation, which is definitely a huge draw in the modern day. What has all of this historic growth and prosperous history culminated in? into the present day? Well, a city that feels very disjointed. A city that, as I'll show you in a moment, can't quite figure out what its own identity is. First, the good. Santa Clarita's bus rapid transit network is extensive and deserves immense props. It has just under a dozen routes servicing everywhere from busy malls, business parks, suburban communities, rural communities, public parks, heavily trafficked commercial cross streets, and everywhere in between. The bus routes are surprisingly thorough, and when doing my research for this video, I visited some more unique stops, including this one, way on the outskirts of the city, in the unincorporated community of Valverde. These bus routes are crucial to the health and vitality of the city of Santa Clarita. They provide a great alternative for residents and workers within and around the city to quickly get to where they want to go, and for a relatively inexpensive cost. You'd even be more surprised to find out that their buses even shuttle passengers from the city to other nearby communities in LA County, even as far away as downtown Los Angeles, UCLA, North Hollywood, and Woodland Hills. Santa Clarita also operates Metrolink rail service throughout the city as well, with the Antelope Valley Line stopping four times at Vista Canyon, Via Princesa, Santa Clarita proper, and downtown New Hall. One gripe I have with a few of these stops is that they're certainly lacking much of anything around them, meaning large commuter parking lots and overall just failing in the convenience department. I mean, here at Santa Clarita proper station, what do we have around it? Dense walkable communities with ample shopping, dining, and recreation areas? Nah, just nothing but black concrete as far as the eye can see. Essentially the same problem here at the Via Princesa stop. However, not such the case at the downtown New Hall stop. I think it's worth mentioning just how much potential a place like downtown New Hall has to the city of Santa Clarita. As a bit of background, New Hall used to be a town of its own, as the area can date its habitation by Europeans all the way back to 1797. But ever since 1987, when Santa Clarita annexed the community into its city, it's been a part of Santa Clarita. Old Town New Hall still shows its old and dated character, whether for better or for worse. And before the 2020s, when people had not discovered their love of renovating dying downtowns, it was just that, a dead space full of gang activity. As of late, it's seen a few much needed doses of renovation and development, such as new shops, restaurants, farmers markets, and dense housing that have all been added to the main street. And it's only gonna get better from here. Evident in how proud the city is of their efforts, adding on Old Town New Hall's website, both it to be the Santa Clarita Premier Arts and Entertainment District, which for right now seems like a stretch. Oh yeah, and the Metrolink stop is right in the thick of it. Additionally, the stop at the currently developing Vista Canyon looks promising. However, nothing has really come of it in the past year since I've been monitoring the project. So that's not a great sign, but here's to hoping this neighborhood becomes a dense, lively, urbanist hub of transit-oriented development that everyone wants it to become. With direct rail connection to downtown Burbank, Burbank Airport, and downtown Los Angeles' Union Station, there's definitely appeal here. As far as bike lanes go, it's not great. You'll be sharing the road with cars on most of the city's strodes, but the city does have an extensive off-road bike trail network, making for a safer way to commute and just enjoy your leisurely bike ride. If you're up for the workout, as the city can get pretty hilly. Now for the bad. Santa Clarita is sprawl central. The city is just so spread out. 
It can often take 20 to 30 minutes just to go 5 or 6 miles due to the sheer amount of intersections and heavy volume of cars moving through the city, especially on weekends and holidays. And yeah, it's probably still faster than taking the bus, but certainly not safer. Having spent so much time in Santa Clarita, I can confidently say that I have seen and heard more car crashes than anywhere else I've ever spent time. And I know it's anecdotal, but having lived and visited so many different areas of the country, it's definitely something that always stays in the back of my mind whenever I'm visiting the city. Part of why I I think this is a problem here is particularly because of its road designs. There are a handful of main arterial roads in the city, including the Old Road, Magic Mountain Parkway, Soledad Canyon Road, and Newhall Ranch Road, among a few others. The biggest thing to note about these roads is just how massive they really are. Tell me who thought putting six to eight lane roads through a suburban community filled with children and the elderly was a good idea. At nighttime, these roads basically turn into the Autobahn, when upper middle class Santa Clarita high schoolers treat their BMWs like like NASCAR, going 70 and a 45 past Trader Joe's and Target on their way to In-N-Out. I've never been to such a place where I felt more at risk of being a victim of this kind of stupidity than Santa Clarita, and it happens every single day. Now back to more development. Another neighborhood that I feel worth mentioning is the newly developing neighborhood of Valencia. Now, this one is neither good nor bad per se. It's really too early to tell, but here are the facts. First, it's located right next to a landfill, which is less than ideal, and has stirred a lot of drama and controversy online and in message boards within the community. And while I will say it has just a glimmer of the right idea with these multifamily housing units, there's nothing within or around the community making it desirable as of now, besides a dying amusement park, that is. But in essence, it really is just more sprawl. And it looks to be another case of a corporation squeezing as many people in as possible to a dense area for the sake of maximizing profit rather than actually providing anything worth, well, anything to the people living here. Genuinely, what is attracting people to move to a place like this? There's nothing to do here. Don't you guys like doing stuff? There's no stuff out here. You know you have other options. At a similar price point in neighborhoods, towns, and cities quite close to where there's actual culture and walkability. And subjecting yourself to the smell of a landfill with price tags like these it just doesn't make sense. Somebody tell the people of Valencia that there are much, much better options. Another thing the city fails at with flying colors is land use. Santa Clarita has more parking spaces than blades of grass, it seems. On every intersection, Santa Clarita is home to shopping centers of all shapes and sizes, but one thing is strikingly apparent, and that's the endless amount of land devoted to parking spaces. And the kicker is, they're usually all at like 50-ish percent capacity at any given time of day. I mean, you could see it here on the map's imagery. It's almost comical. Santa Clarita is really a beautiful area too, and it's such a shame that city planners and developers put so much stock into making it just another typical suburb, when it could have been so much more. The funniest thing is, as with many suburbs, the areas of the city that are walkable and have housing over and around retail and commercial spaces are the most popular. People love not having to drive everywhere to fulfill their basic needs and necessities, but instead of making those places abundant, they're limited here, exclusive, and you're gonna need a car to get to them. Or, of course, you could take these pedestrian-friendly strode bridges, which I mean, I get the purpose in a freezing cold winter city like Des Moines, Iowa, but in Santa Clarita, I mean, come on. It's just embarrassing. Okay, so downtown Newhall is promising, and so is the Vista Canyon project, and Santa Clarita has no excuse not to urbanize, with the median age being 36 years old, which is younger than the median age of the U.S. population, of 38 years old. And with institutions such as the College of the Canyons, the Masters University, and the California Institute of the Arts being located here, you'd think there'd be so much more investment on the city's end for things such as bike lanes, light rail, dense apartment housing, and communal gathering spaces. But no. And I like to compare sprawling suburbs with more dense city counterparts, with similar populations, just to get a sense of what they have the potential to be. Santa Clarita is 20,000 residents larger than Salt Lake City, 75,000 residents larger than Charleston, South Carolina, and 30,000 residents larger than Providence, Rhode Island. But it has no real thriving downtown, no light rail network, no transit-oriented development, is overrun by long stretches of strode, suburban sprawl, and ocean-sized parking lots. But, like I said, there's hope. Downtown Newhall, Vista Canyon, Valencia, potentially. Will Santa Clarita densify into an urban oasis in the next 20 to 30 years, or will it continue its descent into suburban obscurity? Only time will tell. That's all for this video. Be sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed. Let me know what you think, if you've ever visited or even live in Santa Clarita, and I'll see you in the next video from town, city, state.